Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to make a sort of unique quad scaling script, which will basically take any mask that's a quadrilateral, whether it be a rectangle or a square, and what we can do is set up a specific uh, value to set the scale by. And what we can do is continually click on it to slowly set the scale in that direction by that much. So in this case, we're scaling it by 50 at a time, or I could change it to maybe like something large like 200 and scale it even more. And the purpose of this is just to give you some control to allow you to change the scale of shapes and masks very easily. It's basically a mask algorithm that you can use for a bunch of vertices in order to modify the scale. And basically whatever value you put in is going to be the amount it's going to be scaling by. So if we wanted to take a look at just maybe increments of one by one, we could hit one and just keep on viewing the very small changes. And if you wanted to go the extra mile, you could actually add animation to this and watch it scale over time, which would be really cool. Before we get started with this video, down below I just wanted to remind you to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description you can check out the code for this on GitHub and download it and modify it for yourself to make it a lot cooler. And down in the description as well you can follow us on Instagram to get live updates on when videos come out. Also don't forget to join the Discord server where you can join all of our awesome members in talking about scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more get your questions answered and help others get theirs answered. And the last bit of housekeeping is if you wanna follow the channel and help support it, as well as get cool perks along the way, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or a VIP to get various cool perks like voting for weekly tutorials, monthly or weekly live streams, code shoutouts, and receiving code and videos a week in advance. So this tutorial is gonna be relatively quick, but the concept is going to be that we can take a set of vertices and apply real world algorithms to it. And we're gonna be referencing some actual on paper math I did uh, in order to come up with this idea. So first let's go ahead and open up a new JavaScript file. And we're going to start with creating this super simple UI. And I'll just pop it over here so we have it for reference. But all we need to do is have obviously a group here for our scale by text and our edit text and then an area for our button. Uh, we're going to start off by creating a new window and the type of window is going to be a palette and I'm just going to call this our quad scalar and it's going to have an undefined size. Then I'm going to set the orientation of the window equal to a column. That way all of the items and groups we put into it will go from top to bottom. Then I'm going to need a group to contain my two elements here. I'm going to need my scale by text and the edit text. So I'll say group one is equal to our window and I'm going to add a group undefined size and the name of that group is group one. And because we want all of the elements in this group to go from left to right, we're going to define the group one orientation equal to a row. Then we'll create this static text here. So I'll say scale text is equal to group one. We're going to add what's called a static text, text that doesn't really do anything but just display information. And we're going to call it maybe like scale by because we're going to be scaling by this amount. Then we'll create a scale edit text and an edit text is of course the ones where we can put in our own custom values. So we'll say group one dot add an edit text undefined size. And we'll have the starting text maybe be like 50. But if it's only 50, that's not going to be a very wide edit text because by default, it's going to set the size to whatever the text in here is. So what I can do is grab my scale edit text. And if I set the number of characters to something, that's going to give it enough space no matter what for how many characters I give it. So if I wanted to make sure there's enough space for four or five characters, I can just put in that number and we'll automatically size it accordingly. Then lastly, we need our button. We don't need to create an individual group for it in this case because um, there's not really any other elements to go left to right or up or down in. It's going to automatically be placed there based on the column orientation of our window. So I'll say our scale button is equal to our window.add. We're going to add a button, undefined size, and call it scale. Now all we need to do is grab our window and center it and then grab our window again and show it. And if we run our script, you can see we're gonna get mostly the same looking UI. Uh, this should be characters, not character. And that will allow us to fit in those five characters. 
So now it's time to build the After Effects part. We need to have a layer or layers with a mask, and we're gonna grab all four of the vertices on our quadrilateral mask and essentially apply an algorithm to them to scale it by whatever this number is. So first, let's go ahead and grab a variable called our comp. We're gonna set this equal to our app.project.activeItem. We're going to make a bunch of assumptions and assume they have a project open and whatever layer or layers they have selected is gonna be the quad layer that we're dealing with. Then I'm gonna say var layer is equal to our comp.selected layers. And I'm just gonna grab the first one. Again, if you wanted to do this to as many layers as you want, just uh, use all the selected layers and loop through them instead of just grabbing the first one. And in fact, we could probably even move this code uh, into our button click to make it a little more efficient. So let's grab our scale button at an on click event. So whenever we click on our button, we need to do some things inside of here. The first thing we're gonna do is check if we have a composition open and valid. To do this, we're gonna say if um, our app.project.active item is equal to null, if there's no active item, or if the opposite of our app.project.active item is an instance of a comp item, then we know there's no comp selected. If something's not active in the viewer, or if something is active and it's not a comp item, we need the user to select a comp item. So we'll say, please select a comp in at least one layer. Then we'll return false to quit out of this code. And we'll create a variable here called comp and set that equal to our app.project.activeItem. So this is the code we're gonna be moving. And now we're gonna actually check if there's any selected layers. To do that, we're just gonna say if comp.selectedLayers.length is less than one, meaning there's zero selected layers, then we're gonna say, please select at least one layer. And also return false to basically escape out of this click and until they put in a proper value or select that composition and layers. So if they've gotten past this bit of code, we have an active comp. We also need our quad layer. And that's gonna be our uh, comp.selectedLayers0, which is gonna be this guy here. This is our quad layer. Now we need to go down into the mask properties. So the way I'm gonna do that is grab my quad layer and the property called masks, or is it mask? If I hit M, or if I just drop down here, it's called masks. So I can go down into masks and then property mask one. Or you could even just say dot property one, and that's gonna basically give you the first mask. So this is referencing our mask itself. So I'm gonna create a variable behind it called um, this mask. And just to make sure we're getting this value properly, let's say this mask.name, and this should give us, I believe, mask one. And as you can see, that's giving us the right mask. Now let's go down into the path here and get the actual vertices and shape object required. So in order to get our points, which we're gonna create as a variable, this is gonna be an array of our four points in the four corners of our quadrilateral. We're gonna grab this mask.property called mask shape which contains essentially the shape of our mask, and we're gonna grab the value. The value of our mask shape returns the entire shape. And if you're not familiar, I've gone over a few times in tutorials, a shape inside of After Effects contains your vertices and your in and out tangents, which are basically just these guys and any of the curve handles attached to it. So um, what I can do is grab the value.vertices, and now if I alert my points, Go ahead and run it and hit scale. You can see I'm gonna get my whole value of all of my points. And now we can take these points and apply sort of traditional math to it in order to scale our quad. So now what we're gonna do is create a variable called our scaled points. And this is gonna essentially contain our algorithm to convert our original points into the new ones. So if you take a look at this visual, I'm going to go ahead and explain it as I'm explaining the code that it's associated with. The first thing we're gonna to do to scale our points is we're actually going to need to define a radius. The radius is simply going to be our scale by factor. So once we have gotten past all of our checks and our quad layer is valid, I'm gonna create a variable called r and set this equal to parse int. We're gonna parse an integer out of some text 
and the text we're going to parse it from is our scale edit text dot text inside of it. So if it's 50, it's going to convert that string that has the the basically letters or numbers 50, which are a string, and convert it into an actual integer, which we can do math with and other things. And then the algorithm we're going to be using involves our original points and our radius, and that's it. And now to explain how we're going to scale our points based on our new radius value. Essentially, the first point, all we're going to do is subtract the radius and the radius. And this is going to uh, basically move it up and back the proper amount. The second pair of vertices, we're going to take our point, our original point, and add r and negative r to the y. This is going to push it over to the right, most likely, and up. Then for the third point, we're going to take our original point and add r and r again. This is then going to push that point down and to the right. And then for our last point, we're going to subtract, and this is going to adjust that point as well. So what this is going to do, depending on the order you do this, is either start bringing those points in close together and then reversing them, or from the original point, it will start scaling them out. It really depends on the order you adjust these points. If I was to modify uh, basically which points get affected first or by which radius, maybe we could change the negatives to some positives, it's going to affect how those are. But generally, at least with this setup, uh, sometimes it will start to converge towards the middle and then push out, which will still appear like a normal quadrilateral. So hopefully that makes sense. You'll see it again as we test it. Um, what we're going to need to do now is, with this new uh, array full of these modified points, we need to create a new shape object and apply that shape back to our mask and replace it. So the way we're going to do this is by creating a new shape object. So we'll just call this like new shape. And we'll set this equal to a new shape with a parentheses to create a new object. And all we need to do to set the vertices of this is say new shape dot vertices is equal to our scaled points. And if you had some curves and stuff that you calculated too, you could just grab your new shape dot uh, in tangents or your new shape dot out, out tangents and set those as well. So now we have our new shape, which is filled with our modified scaled points. Now we just need to set the value of that mask. So I'm going to grab this mask. And once again, I'm going to modify the mask shape, which just contains a shape object. And we're going to set the value of this simply enough to our new shape. And this will apply all the vertices and in and out tangents to this shape. Now, one last thing I want to do because we are making quite a few changes and I want to be able to quickly undo them if I've messed up. We're going to add an app dot begin undo group. We'll just call this a uh, quad scaling. And then after everything, we'll add an app dot end undo group to define where the control Z will end. So if I go ahead and run this, I'm going to create actually a fresh uh, layer here create a fresh mask as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and select something like 100, select my layer and hit scale. And as you can see, it started to converge inward. It went in about 100 pixels. So if I go ahead and track this here, this vertex is at X about 730. If I hit scale, now it's at about 830. So as you can see, it is modifying it. It's scaling it both on the X and Y axis by 100 each time. And now it's coming out slowly on the other end. If we wanted to, we could probably modify this to make it only change the uh, width by making all the Y values zero. Let's go ahead and try this after we undo it a few times and change it back to 100. Hit scale. And as you can see, that allows us to specifically control one axis. So you can go through and uh, mess around with this and even loop it over time, create a bunch of different shape layers or mask layers and watch them animate as you want. And this is just a fun way to use real world math and modify uh, a mask or After Effects layers with it. That's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And of course, down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub and get the code for this and mess around with it yourself and expand it. Also down in the description, you can follow us on Instagram to get notified of when videos go live. And don't forget to join the Discord server, get help and answer questions in scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. 
And lastly, if you want to help support the channel and again get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or a VIP and get your name recognized in the Discord server as well and other cool perks. But that's going to do it for this week's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time.